So 2020 is finally over. You may want to reflect on ways in which you dealt with stress last year and how you may want to improve. Here are Life Beacon Associates as they give you tips on dealing with stress in education, faith, and relationships. Education is not just about your degree or what you learn, it's about life skills that you learn as you go along. We have to try and do something different. What actually do you do that motivates you? your style of learning but whether you're a visual person audio are you an activist so you're a doer and then are you a pragmatic person you need to really know what works for you finally is mentorship it's very important that you ask for help but what we don't want to get to is where it becomes depression or anxiety or panic attack and then it starts to affect your mental health religion would be institutional spirituality will be more experiential and individualized. What is it that motivates you in this life? What is it that makes you happy in this life? What is it that brings you fulfillment in this life? We are not all the same. It's produced like some kind of resilience in people that helps them to better cope with stress. Put yourself in the place where you free up mental and physical energy to be able to properly deal with issues. Our greatest desire as human beings is to be loved by our parents, in our family relationships, in our friendships, in our acquaintanceships, even there's still a certain element of love and trust and acceptance and communication and respect and boundaries that we do expect. One of the greatest stresses of relationships is trust. But you see, trust is the one thing that gives you confidence in every relationship you're in. Key of acceptance. First thing you like about someone is the same thing that is coming to annoy you the most. You cannot force change, but you should always strive to change. But how can you encourage change? Through being supportive. Sow a good seed of love. Be a better person. To have a healthy relationship, you must be ready to communicate, especially when it is difficult. Being honest is such a stress for most people. And respect is reciprocal. Respect people's boundaries. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm pleased to be here this evening to meet all of you. Um, Live Bacon, uh, international the advancement of education and empower people, most especially the, the minority group, and to give them, to support them in their education and also support them in, in terms of guiding them and providing knowledge that would help them to build their, their life, as in build their foundation for their life. We, we mainly focus on education, career, leadership, faith, and relationship. So this evening, as part of this section, we would have three experienced resources who are also associates of Live Beacon International. And they would talk um, on education and career, faith and relationship. And I would like to introduce them to you before they talk. So we'd have a panel where they would talk for 15 minutes each. And then after that, you can ask all the questions that you want to. Whilst they are talking, you can actually put your questions in the chat so that when they are done, your questions will be answered, just so that you don't forget any um, question you plan to, um, to, to ask. So the first resource person that would have is Stella Morris AC. AC. So Stella is, um, she, she's, uh, she's an associate who has a degree in law, that's LLB, and is currently a master, has a master's in HR from Sheffield. She practices in legal fields and also in HR. Um, and she's done this for the past five years. She's married and she has a daughter. We would also hear from a lady called Nanaya. She's an architect by profession. She's been in that industry for the past 10 years. And she is a doctoral researcher in Loughborough Uni. 
she's also married and she's a reverend minister by calling she's she's going to talk to us about faith how you can use faith to distress and to help you in your academic as well and then would we'll have the last session by a uh, marianne yabua she is a pastor by calling she pastors a church and she's um she has a postgraduate qualification in teaching and she's currently doing a master's course in psychology and she she's very passionate about um, the well-being of young people and based on that she has been doing so much work with well-being practitioners and being in support well-being so i believe that these three people resource people we have here are going to talk to us about how to distress and how to be able to build our capacity in all these aspects so that we don't we, we don't have to get into a situation where we would need that kind of help so and um, without um, much i do i would invite um lady casey to take us through the first section so please don't forget, put your questions in the chat so that after that, they would answer all your questions. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, yeah, my name is Stella Maris, is a, or you can call me Stella. So, um, by the way, it's a privilege to be here. So I'm going to be sharing my screen with you shortly. And do pardon me, I've got cold. So I'm just going to be sipping water from time to time. Right, so today am i doing it right can you all see this yes we can see it okay great i'm gonna run through this very quickly because this normally takes two days or three days training session what well, i've managed to like suppress it and compress it as much as i can so today i'll be talking to you on managing or distressing yourself in the area of your academics and career so um, I love the video that was played. That's actually cleared a lot of things because I really do want to go into what is stress, how do you deal with stress, and what stress can lead to. Sorry, can everyone hear me? Okay. And I also love what um, um, the lady who's just spoken. I'm so sorry, I forgot your name now. And what you what you talked about. So that's really laid a big foundation for me. So I think I can now kind of carry on from here. So the first question really is, um, are you prone to stress? And the answer is yes. In the society that we are today, whether we like it or not, is unavoidable. So everything around us actually ticks and hits stress bells. So what we, that's why we have to look more on how to manage it, because you can't really avoid it. Because I think the video actually says, sometimes you need stress to actually help you to achieve some things. But what we don't want to get to is where it becomes depression or anxiety or panic attack, and then it starts to affect your mental health. So today I would like you to answer as honest as much as you can on that. And then to move further, one of the things I thought about is rather than focusing much on stress, what actually do you do that motivates you? To carry on so you've signed on to university you might be in your first year you might be in your second year third year masters phd you might be working or in a career or in a profession that you don't even like but what is it that actually gets you going other than all of this so that's another question do we need to ask ourselves and then what is it that we can do or what is it that we can stop doing that isn't working there is a saying that it's only a fool that does the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. So if something's not working, obviously we have to try and do something different. So one of these are one of the areas and things that we, if we think about can actually help us to distress and manage our stress level. So I'm just gonna quickly dive in, cause I said, <laughs> I've seen all the slides, I'm gonna quickly go on. So education, one of the first things to do, like just like everything else I'm gonna talk about might actually apply to other people. And I'm hoping I'm not gonna jump into what they're gonna be saying to us as well. So first and first is time management. So in, if you're in a career, in work, whatever field you find yourself, you need to know how to manage your time. Um, we're in a society that actually time counts for everything. So if you're not sure on how to manage your time or 
if you procrastinate a lot, then you are building problems for yourself. So as a student, you've got assignments, you need to plan. You need to, when I was in uni, well, I am kind of still studying. I have a calendar that I actually, the first thing I do once I start, go through my modules and look at all the assignments and the deadlines because I fell a victim of that in my third year in my uni. I missed two deadlines in my assignments. So I learned the hard way. So that is one of the things you need to be doing to ensure that you keep on track with things. And then you have, and what I say, excess commitment or engagement. A lot of us, we don't know how to say no. You're, it's good to be part of a society and do this and do that and all of that. But you can't do everything. You can't be in this, be in that, be in your jack of all trade, master of none. You need to learn how to prioritize prioritize your things and set things as they ought to be. So you can't just have, you have assignments due, but you want to go for this event, you want to go for that event, you're still going to come back to that assignment. So you need to know how to reduce the excess commitments around you and or maybe just engage in this later in life. For instance, I've been told sometimes, oh, do you want to be part of this? And I say to them, right, it's a good thing. I really love to be part of this. I'm passionate about it. But at this point in my life, especially with, with a new baby, I'm actually not taking so much because I can't deal with it. So you don't want to have that stress. And then you get to a point where you don't deliver because you've got so much happening around you. And then the next thing is to maintain healthy lifestyle. And what do I mean by I'm going to take that and the next one together, avoid unhealthy lifestyle. So rather than, um, so maintain a healthy lifestyle and avoid unhealthy lifestyle. So in other words, exercise, like we said, we've said the lockdown word fam too many times. Go for a walk, exercise, do some singing, engage yourself if you love kickboxing, whatever it is that you can do to kind of distress yourself. Find yourself doing, even watching a movie is a good one, but try and do something that you know can kind of get your adrenaline pumping and get you those cortisones and those healthy melanin, whatever they're called going on for you so it's actually a good place to be and what i mean by avoid an unhealthy lifestyle things like drugs because one thing about stress is you can get to a point where if it's not managed you then find yourself using drugs hard drugs alcohol and even excessive sex pornographic things like that can actually affect you so you need to find a way to not get yourself into that kind of situation and then ask for help. And I'm really glad um, about the group that you have in the university, because that's actually one of the links that I have actually made of how, how to go out there and ask for help. It's very important that you ask for help and speak to people. You might not know it, but you might know someone who can refer you to somebody. So speak up. Don't ever put your head down like an ostrich. You're just going to not be helping yourself. So try as much as you can. You must, and I always say to people, you must have one or two persons that you can confide in, that you can tell the integrities of your life and not be afraid. So it's very important that you do that. And then in education as well, one of the areas that people struggle with is not knowing how to move on from failure. Some of us, you might be an A student, so you ace all your studies and your subjects. You don't have to re-see anything. Great, excellent. That, that's what everyone would want to be. But some people struggle academically even at work. So what I'm, whatever I'm saying to you, I'm also applying it in the place of work. So in the place of work, you find people who manage their time well, deliver, they get all the, um, what do you call them, during their PDP, um, is an A score, everything is excellent, but you have people who struggle. So rather than dwell on your failures and your inabilities, it's okay to deal with them and move on you always have to move on, try and move on. Because when you start to dwell in the past, that's when depression comes in and lack of, I can't do it, starts to come in. And I think I've said about the excess, excessive commitment of say no. And um, what's happened there? Okay, so career awareness. One of the things, one of the areas that I deal with is also helping people in the area of career. And one of the challenges I've found with young people, okay, I'll use myself as an example. I come from a very medical background. So my parents are all in the medical field, doctors and nurses, pharmacists. So that no one's ever done law. So when I had to go into the law field, it was really challenging. No one could actually help me per se. 
So it's very important that before you go into choose any career path or anything that you want to do, that you think about the pros and the cons and the challenges and the good things that are about that field because it's going to kind of help you pre or prepare your mind or propel you for the challenges when they come. So one of the things, for example, giving law, for example, is a very competitive um, field. So a lot of lawyers or a lot of students finish a law degree, struggle for years to get a training contract. And you see people fall into depression because of that. So you need to think about that when you're going into a field. You need to research the field you're going into. Things like your medical, like your pharmacy, um, optometry, medicine, you, you're likely going to get a job with NHS. But that's not the same with psychology or law or I um, can't think of any other one now. And then you need to think about if you're going to go into a field that is going to be long hours working so you're going to be working like for instance police officers tend to work on social hours and long hours you need to think about all those things as well in your career on your profession in transitioning from education to career you need to think about careers that will take you offshore like if you're going to be an engineer drilling in the offshore so you know you're not going to be with your family very often you need to think about that so if you're someone who's family oriented you want to have family around that might be that might not be the kind of profession or career you might want to pursue but notwithstanding it's still your choice like i said we're here to create an awareness and then you need to think about the pay yes some people are driven by pay whether we like it or not as a matter of fact money is what makes the world go round. so you might be driven by the money that you're going to get from that so some jobs are low paid job whether what, no matter what professional level you get to so you need to bear that in mind other professions will pay you much more and then you need to be willing to diversify what do i mean by this for it for instance in a career again like law sorry i'm using law a lot you might want to come start off saying i want to be a commercial lawyer we all know that the commercial lawyer is a field that is very difficult to get into because it's quite competitive you might start thinking of your niche firms rather than thinking of your your magic circle firm the big american law firms if you can't get something there you might think of starting from your local firms or doing some pro bono work doing some charity work doing some voluntary work to get the experience you need in order not to stress yourself in the sense of oh my god i'm not getting nothing so you might want to try doing something different or just going off and then coming back to what you're of course not going off tangent completely because then you're not going to be helping yourself and then i always say to people also consider other career routes that you can take so for instance if you want to be a doctor a lot of people you might not get the grades you need to get into medicine in university but you can go in and do biomedical science and then from there you can get your admission some people go abroad like to um ukraine to study rather than the uk if you don't have the finances and the funds for that and I'm going to quickly run through this because it's quite um, a lot. So one of the things to also be aware is when you're thinking about career and work stress and lifestyle is you need to be thinking to yourself as a professional, am I looking for a job that's going to challenge me in the sense of I want to stretch myself and do the best that I want to do? Because if you're not that kind of person that challenges yourself and then you find yourself in such a job, you're going to be not helping yourself then you need to also find your what i call your 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 tick boxes for instance you want a job that's fun filled not every job is fun filled some jobs are more fun filled than others whether we like it or not so some jobs are more laid back more relaxing so if that's you you might want to go for something like that if you want to go for variety then you need to think about those as well find people in those areas and field and speak to them if you think of yourself as someone who's more of a management oriented person so you might so you then you might find yourself being like a line manager working to careers that will get you into such positions so you're not going to be working in isolation really if you're someone who likes people around you because like i'm saying all these things are what's going to help you to live a less stressful life so i hope i'm communicating still and then you need to also think about the money yes yeah that's fine i think that i'm um, due to the time constraint we'll just move on and then when she comes back, we can ask questions and then we'll move on. So um, I think for now, we can continue with faith and spirituality, which will be led by um, Nanaya. Thank you. 
Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, kindly confirm if you can um, hear me clearly. Um, yes, we can hear you. Okay, wonderful. Um, I want to serve a bit of an interactive session. Um, thank you all for inviting me. Um, Flanny and her gang is uh, an honor to, to be here to speak with you on um, spirituality and stress, how um, spirituality, your spirituality can be a tool um, to help you deal with stress. Um, if anybody belongs to any particular, um, or anybody has any particular faith orientation, you can just um, text it in. Um, in the chat um, box so that we see um, exactly the kinds of uh, the sort of diversity that we have on here. Um, pardon me if I tend to lean more on the Christian side because um, that is where I'm coming from. Um, but feel free to share if I touch on anything that um, probably might work differently. Um, in your line of faith, please um, feel free to to share um, how it applies. But I'm going to try and be um, as general as possible so that wherever we are on the faith spectrum, we can relate. All right, so um, I'm going to start off with um, trying to define what spirituality is. Um, spirituality is is kind of is seen as a, a very complex and um, subjective um, construct um, because it it has so many definitions, so many dimensions. Um, ultimately, um, it deals with um, a sort of transcendent uh, dimension that gives meaning to existence uh, and the capacity to experience the sacred. Um, I pray that as we go on further, some of these um, technical terms and definitions will become more clear to us. So in more simple terms, um, spirituality um, will be defined as um, to know who you are um, and um, the knowledge of um, yourself understanding your spiritual qualities and attributes uh, to get to a place of love, peace, purity, and bliss, not from the external, but from the internal. Um, oftentimes, there's um, kind of like a, a a pressure to differentiate between spirituality and religion. Some people tend to um, in use it, those two terms interchangeably, but um, there is some difference. Religion in this strictest sense um, connotes or signifies like a bond between man and a greater than human power. Um, often there's the strive to make that differentiation because um, religion seems to have, in some circles, a very bad reputation, if I may, if I may use that, because people see it as um, you trying to worship God vicariously through other people's experiences. And so immediately you mention religion, and history has not really been favorable. I mean, if you look at or most faiths that we commonly practice. If you, you trace the line of history, there are a lot of um, excesses that give religion a very bad rap. Immediately you touch on that. Um, but there is an aspect of religion that deals with spirituality. And so another definition for spirituality is the experiential, um, um, ex an experiential personal um, 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 encounter that you define for yourself with that 
higher than human um, uh, divine being. So that if I, depending on where you're coming from, it could be Jehovah God, as the Christians call it, it could be Allah, as the Muslims call it, it could be um, um, whatever deity that, that you may worship. And there's the need to bring that in because if you are a Christian, you realize that, yes, you can be very religious and go through the religious rudiments, uh, the, um, the practice of um, the faith. And then you realize that there's a point where you get to where you need to personalize the walk for it to become meaningful and beneficial to you. And that is the realm, that spiritual realm of religiosity that benefits or impacts most when it comes to um, stress. Um, so with the differences, you realize that whilst um, religion might deal with, uh, let's say, something like uh, a faith-based community, spirituality often deals with an individualized and personalized walk. Um, whilst religion might be seen to be associated with, let's say, an authoritarian, uh, dogmatic community, spirituality tends to focus on the essence of life, uh, being creative spirited, being or mystical experiences um, beyond what any group or community might define. Um, yeah, so. Religion would be institutional, spirituality would be more experiential and individualized, okay? Now, per the definitions of spirituality, the many definitions of spirituality, they center around um, some key words and phrases. Um, I'm going to run through some of them. Um, that would be um, assigning meaning and purpose to life. Um, your ability to um, build a connection or a relationship with yourself, with others, with nature, and with a higher being. And, and then uh, spirituality can be defined also along the lines of a belief structure and faith. So through all these, there seems to be like four prominent domains of spirituality. And I'm going to run through it quickly with you because we'll see how all of these help to um, in, in, in helping us to de-stress. There's the domain that is personal. It relates with how you relate with yourself, how you find meaning and purpose, and you assign value to life and certain things and happenings in life. Your self-awareness as a driving force. What what is it that motivates you in this life? What is it that makes you happy in this life? What is it that brings you fulfillment in this life? Um, and that is a personal walk and a personal journey that you would need to define for yourself. Because what might make another person sad would not really, it would, <laughs> it's something that you would just easily brush off your shoulder. So like um, Stella was talking about how we react to failure somebody's outlook on failure is that I cannot survive this. I cannot come out from this. But for you and for how you have defined the certain things in your life or how you find purpose and you assign meaning and value to certain things, failure might not be that big of a deal. You might not weigh it on the same scale as another person. So you realize that in the pursuit of spirituality, there's an aspect that is purely personal. Then there is another domain that is communal. Communal in the sense of interpersonal relationships between yourself and others. How you relate with others. What influences, how do you perceive others? How you define yourself in the context of how other people see you. Um, how you operate within a faith-based community that is communal. Even if you are, let's say, you, you define yourself as a strictly spiritual person, the other people that you identify as being on a spiritual journey with you, 
what is your relationship with them? How do you relate with them? So that is another domain. A third domain would be environmental. How do you care and nurture for the physical and biological world around you? So you realize that you meet some people and they have very um, a strong sense of, of their environment. They're very attached to the environment and how uh, uh, to take care of the environment and how they, really, they have a certain kind of connection to the environment. You walk outdoors and the sense of awe that you get at the creation around you. It sort, of, it sort of inspires you and, and gives you a, a sense of connection with something beyond yourself. And then the last one would be the transcendental. Uh, there are those who believe in um, a connection with something beyond the physical. Something beyond the physical. Uh, we refer to it as a divine being, whether it is with God or with just that deep sense of self. Um, it's, it's, it's that out of body experience, that transcendental experience. Um, that is also categorized as the domain of spirituality. Now, let me move on to the mechanisms of spirituality. I've talked about the social aspect of spirituality. So you realize that when you belong to a social network, um, it helps to um, sometimes take the pressure off things. Sometimes being able to talk to people of similar um, understanding, a similar um, faith, a similar passion, a similar understanding. Um, it helps you to unburden yourself of some of the challenges that you go through. Um, I know that this is a university campus and um, especially for the faith-based communities, I know there are several um, um, groups um, around around campus. It it wouldn't help to join one. Um, we all come from different faiths, and we all come together here. And sometimes it's easy to say, "I'm not home. I'm not in my familiar territory. So let me keep to myself." It wouldn't hurt to join um, um, a faith-based group, especially if the the uh, um, what we call the same household of faith. Yes, it would be a wonderful opportunity for you to join that for the social networking part. And then when you talk about the personal aspect of, or the personal domain of spirituality, you realize that it has a direct influence on your lifestyle. Um, Stella mentioned about um, unhealthy practices that you, you, you may sometimes indulge in. Um, you realize that sometimes belonging to a certain faith-based group may mean that certain lifestyles are kind of abhorrent to you. Certain uh, indulgences are things that you do not partake of just because of your spiritual walk. So maybe something like excessive alcohol intake, um, unhealthy sexual behaviors, um, things that are known to um, um, help us or, prom or make us susceptible to stress or open us up to stresses. It, you might not readily indulge in them just because of your spiritual walk. So it has a direct impact on our lifestyle. Then we talk about psychological factors, your identity, your sense of self, how um, do you define all these things? And in a bit, I'll come to um, coping mechanisms that um, um, spirituality helps, spirituality and faith. And then the last one would be like your meaning, the sense of purposefulness that you assign to things in life. Okay, so why are we talking about um, spirituality and stress? Um, do you realize that we all react differently to different situations in, in, in life? Um, we are not all the same. And managing stress is all about taking charge, taking charge of your thoughts, your emotions, your schedule, the way you deal with problems that arise. 
especially problems that you have not um, predicted, you have not catered for, or sometimes you find yourself in um, a, a situation where you just feel overwhelmed by events. What do you do? Now, research has found that spirituality is a resilient variable that um, it, it, it is, is produced like some kind of resilience in people that helps them to better cope with stress. Um, I've, I've been preparing for this. I've read several um, research that has been done in medical, especially in medical facilities, and then also in um, educational facilities, how students cope with stress and how especially people who are um, um, in certain debilitating um, illnesses, especially um, ones that um, by and large will lead to the demise of the patients and exactly how their sense of spirituality helps them to deal with the stress and what keeps coming up is that those who are inclined to be religious seem to have better coping mechanisms against the stress of what you're going through um, some Indian researchers did um, uh, this research on, on one of the university campuses and they were trying to ascertain um, um, the same thing. And what they found was that spirituality and stress were like inversely proportional to each other. When spirituality is high, stress tends to be low. And when stress is high, spirituality tends to be low. So the question we are asking is, how resilient are you to withstand against some of the stresses, the common stresses that we encounter in school? And how does your spirituality or your faith, how does it help you? We have different stresses, different responses to the stress that comes our way. Um, one of the ways in which spirituality helps is with your, your worldview, if I can put it that way. Worldview will be, will be described as like the prism of ideas and beliefs through which you perceive and judge things and the events around you. And this is important because often times the things that stress us out is not really the stress event itself, but our perception of that event as a threat to us. So the question then becomes, what is your worldview? What influences how you perceive things? What is the filter through which you judge things? What is, is what, what informs? Um, um, how you process um, 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 the things that happen around you to define one thing as stressful from the other. That it is that worldview that makes our responses to stress different one person to another. And you realize that there's a, a, a scripture um, if, if, if there's a scripture in um, Proverbs 18, 14, um, to borrow or to, yeah, to borrow from the Christian perspective, but there's a scripture from um, um, Proverbs 18, 14. It says that the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Um, your, your faith plays a very important role in how you look at things, in how you define things, in how you, you show yourself up against certain things. Because it, we acknowledge as a Christian community that we, we carry something in us 
that makes us or that gives us the ability to withstand certain things we we the spirit that we carry man is made of a body he has a soul and he has a spirit we acknowledge that we carry there's a part of us that is able to sustain and bear us up in the face of certain things that we go through you realize that the teachings of your faith gives you a certain mindset it gives you a certain confidence it gives you a certain it helps you to process certain things in a particular way that sometimes gives you an added layer of confidence when certain things come your way so your faith is important in shaping your world view that helps you to process and judge and define exactly how you label um, the stresses that come your way whether it is something that you are able to deal with or something that you are not able to deal with so your faith is important in helping you to do that um, i'm going to run through the rest um, quite quickly um, another thing that helps us to cope um, um, is meditation putting yourself in your relaxation mode and you realize that when you are able to is a natural quality of 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 every every person to be able to train your mind and put yourself in the place where um, you free up mental and physical energy to be able to probably to properly deal with with issues so meditation is something that also is important what do you meditate on what do you focus on when you are stressed can you put yourself in a place where you can disconnect from that which um, um, you deem a threat and put yourself in a in a in a place where you have you 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 calm yourself down and another way that you can bring yourself to that area of calm is through imagination putting yourself in a place of calm and peace um, another way that you can do that is um, through prayer, prayer is now a noted um, 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 alternative um, treatment, if I can say, um, to, to an alternative therapy to dealing with um, stressful situations. Um, and if you are a person of faith, you realize that all faiths pray. All faiths pray. And so I'd encourage you to pray. If you're a Christian, pray. If you're a Muslim, pray. Whatever it is, pray. <laughs> Whatever you go through, you need to pray. For us, the Christians, we say that, um, he says, there's a scripture that says, call upon me in, in, in the day of trouble. I will, I will deliver you. So pray. It would, it would, it would set your, your, your mind um, at ease. And then to conclude, um, the last thing that I'll, I'll point out is that um, research has found that spirituality seems to flourish post midlife, which means that when we are young, we feel in control of a lot of things. And so spirituality is not really something that we pay a lot of, um, give particular attention to. But in this era that we are in, where the whole world is kind of turning topsy turvy because of COVID. Please do not, if you need a help, if you need any help, if you're going through any stress of any kind, and you find that it's something that is beyond your ability to deal with, do not be in that place of, um, I'm young, I should be able to do this. If you find that you need the help, reach out to somebody, reach out to a friend, talk to your executives um the the, the, the guys from uh, nightline if i got the name right reach out to somebody talk to somebody and get the help um, that we that you need um so i'll end here and then during the question time we can take more questions so thank, thank you for having thank you reverend anaya um i believe that this aspect of 
um, our life is very, very important. That is why the university has actually invested in the chaplaincy to be able to support all of us as students. So um, if you need help, reach out. The chaplaincy is always available 24 seven to support. Live Beacon is available to support you. So reach out when you need help. Um, at this moment, we would invite um, Marianne to take us through the session on relationship. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, La Freak and SU, for inviting us to come along. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'll be as brief as I can. So, relationships and stress in relationships. Um, I mean, according to the dictionary, we say that it relationship is a way in which two or more people or things are connected or at the stage of being connected. And there are different types of relationships. Um, there are family relationships, friendships, um, acquaintanceships, and romantic relationships. But one of the greatest stresses of relationships is trust. Um, there are other aspects of it, which is like key of acceptance, communication, respect and boundaries those are all the things i note and those are the things i work with in terms of um relationships those are the things i scale relationships on um i mean all these things determine the difference between being in a healthy relationship and in an unhealthy relationship and being in an unhealthy relationship is what causes us stress um one of the first things that we need to consider when we're entering into any relationship is not the benefits and unfortunately, we live in a world where a lot of people are in relationships because of benefits. Whether you like it or not, you do enter a relationship based on benefits, even in friendships. Um, you need to try not to do that, by the way, because if, if the more you enter a relationship for benefits, that relationship will never be long lasting. That's just by the way. So, um, like I said, um, what is your purpose of getting into, into a relationship? What is your purpose of staying in a relationship? What is the purpose of building a relationship? Our greatest desire as human beings is to be loved by our parents, in our family relationships, in our friendships, in our acquaintanceships even. There's still a certain element of love and trust and acceptance and communication and respect and boundaries that we do expect. Um, I mean, we all need someone to care for us. We all deserve to be in a healthy relationship, in a loving relationship. And at every point, at every level we are in, most especially being with the right people around us is what we all want. So um, in terms of communication, this at a time, I'm pointing out specifically these five or so um, items that causes us stress in relationships. So I'm going to be very brief. I mean, communication, to have a healthy relationship, you must be ready to communicate. I mean, even especially when it is difficult. Um, most of you are at uni right now, and it is not even easy to have a communication between yourself and your tutors. Um, I've recently gone back to school myself, and I'm even struggling to make friends. And naturally, people think, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a very friendly human being. No, I'm an anti-human being. I do not like human beings. But I have to force and make every effort to build on relationships. It is such an effort for me. It's not so natural. But... I realized that I have to develop relationships to help me to study. So all the things we've talked about, career, faith, and blah, 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 it's all, they, are all in, they all include relationships. They all are things you have to build on to make relationships with people to excel in these areas. Um, being honest is such a stress for most people because nobody wants you to know what's inside of them. So being honest about what you think of someone or what they think of you are one of the hardest things to do in relationships. I mean, it is such an uncomfortable thing to, for, for you to express yourself or, or for you to tell your friend, you know what? I actually do not like that red dress on you. Or to tell your mom the truth that, okay, mom, um, I'm no longer a virgin. But how can your relationship be built on trust when you cannot be comfortable to share such information? Um, it is important to thoroughly know what the other party expects from you either as a family member or as a friend, um, the moment you cease to communicate, the relationship has begun to die. And respect, taken into my next point, is reciprocal, as they say. There are many aspects of the relationship that needs to be respected. We all have to understand that everyone has their own opinion. I mean, I always say that I am not offended by your opinion. I'm not, I don't need to think about what you think to rather hurt me. Rather, it's your opinion. 
Why do I have to stress about your opinion? It is your opinion. Understand that people have their opinions. You might not like it. It might not suit your taste buds, but they're entitled to their opinion. It doesn't have to make you who you are. It doesn't have to stress your brain and make it start self-doubting. That is their opinion. But what do you think of yourself? Those are the things that you need to focus on in every relationship you're in. Um, I mean, I, I, I always think that you have to understand that focusing on being considerate is more important than anything in the relationship when it comes to respect. You have to be considerate, like I said, of people's opinion, how they feel, how they want things to be done. I want to put my socks in the fridge. You want to put your socks in the drawer. It is what I want. You might not like it. I mean, most of you have flatmates and I'm sure you have very clean flatmates. You have very messy flatmates. You have OCD flatmates. There are all types of flatmates, but these things should not cause you stress, especially if when I remember when I was in undergrad, I would keep your plates to the side. I don't have to argue with you. I don't need to knock on your door and tell you, oh, can you come and clean yourself? It's getting on my nerves. I, I clean a toilet every time I want to use it. Whether I'm at home or I'm in public place, I will clean the toilet. So I do not, I cannot fathom why people have stress over things as small as that. Can you imagine if you were to put it on a scale of one to 10, how much time you stress over little things every day? So you stressing over that toilet, which one is better? Cleaning it and moving on and having your number one or two or spending time to go and knock on your flatmate's door, um, getting worked up, getting upset, getting your, I mean, you're developing headaches, which is easier. Put it on a scale. Moving on to boundaries. Um, I believe that boundaries can be relative. I specifically do not understand boundaries in marriages. I, I mean, I'm going to say my husband would tell you, I don't understand boundaries in marriages. I'm taking it to that level because I wanted to go there before I go to anywhere else. Because that's one thing that I, I'm, I'm, that's my, that's my, that's my, um, how do I say it? That's my thorn that I don't understand boundaries in marriages. Now, when you're single or when you're a family member, there are many boundaries that can be, that can be looked at. Like I said, boundaries are relative, but that's my opinion. That's my opinion. So when you're single, yes, you don't want the person to know your PIN number. You don't trust them yet. It takes you back to the trust. Respect that they're not ready to also tell you their PIN number. Respect, which creates the boundaries. Understand that at a certain stage of the relationship, a certain level of trust has not been built enough for somebody to trust you. And you have to respect that they are not there. They are not at that level of trust. For, you to, for them to give you such information or tell you about their past. Some people don't find it very easy to talk about their past. Respect that. It doesn't necessarily mean that they don't want you or they don't love you or they don't care for you. It's just the fact that they're not ready. So respect people's boundaries. Understand that, you know, for example, when your bus enters into your home, into your bedroom, you're in your robe or you're in your shorts, you're in your pajamas. Now that is crossing a boundary your boss cannot enter into your home or into your bedroom while you're there but can your boss barge into your office absolutely so because the level of relationship has changed can your mom barge into your room when you're under the age of 18 yes she can there are different types of boundaries i mean i always say that there are three stages of a child's life there's a point where um your parent can still tell you what to do can still influence you greatly and there's a point where they have to respect you and understand that there is now boundaries. I mean, I can't imagine my mom barging into my brother's room in his approaching 40s of age. I mean, it would be shocking. His wife would freak out. But at this stage where maybe um, some of you might be 18, I don't know how old you are, and you freaked out on your parents all the time that they did those things. You were not an adult according to law. So that boundary was not meant to be respected. And some of you have even developed hatred for your parents or your mothers or your fathers for doing things like that to you when you were little. At that stage, that was their right. They were allowed to, 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 to barge in into that room whereby you're on the phone chatting to a boy or things like that. That was their right. There comes a time where they can no longer do that. So understand that even when it comes to family members, there are times in which that we don't have to respect boundaries. Um, like I said, remember, boundaries is relative. I mean, um, what is that? I'm just trying to rush through because I know we've spent too much time. Key of acceptance. I mean, I was once told that the first thing you like about someone is the same thing that is coming to annoy you the most. That same thing you liked about this 
boy who is so confident, who has this swagger, who is so um, famous amongst everyone. It's that same thing you're going to be so jealous about later. It's that same thing that's going to annoy you. That friend who's so assertive, who's a go-getter, who, who likes to do things a certain way. Oh, you see that? Oh, you're, you're alike. You're similar. I promise you, that same thing you admired in that friend is going to annoy you. So I accept that this is how this person is. Accept that my mom is annoying. She talks too much. Accept that this person just likes to not shave their armpits. You met them like that. You met them like that. You knew that they did not like to shave their armpits. You know that they don't like their hair kept. Why do you have to keep telling them that? Why are you not keeping your hair? The key of acceptance is very important. Accepting somebody as they are. I mean, I'm not saying that people cannot change. I believe in change. I believe that you should always strive to change as a person. But I also know that you cannot force change. But how can you encourage change through being supportive? I'm not very good at this, by the way. I must be honest. I mean, when you're far from me, I'm better off advising you. But when you're so close, I might be so, I can be too muddly. I become that, you know, that, that swan who wants to, you know, look over all, all, all his cheek and all, like, a, like a bird or like a, like a chicken who wants to make sure that you don't, the crocodile doesn't take his chicks away. That's like me. But when you're far away, it's easier. So find people who will accept you for who you are. But also you start with you. Accept people for how they are. Sow a good seed of love and hopefulness and encourage people to change for the better. Now, once again, I want to talk about trust. I mentioned it in the beginning, but I didn't touch much about it. But you see, trust helps us to build a high level of confidence in every relationship we have. Most marriages do not last because the foundation of trust they had was not great in the beginning. Most relationships fall because of that low level of trust. But you see, trust is the one thing that gives you confidence in every relationship you're in. And I left this to the last because without trust, you cannot build on all of these other aspects that I have spoken about. You know, we have a scripture. I just want to throw this scripture in. I can't help it. In Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him. And it says, it will make your path straight. So which means that if I transcend this into a relationship with a friend or with a mother or with even my tutor, if I want my tutor to help me pass, to help my path straight, I have to trust and lean not on my own understanding of what I'm expecting my tutor to do for me. I have to go with what my tutor thinks is best because I'm, I'm expecting something from my tutor. I'm expecting my tutor to, to give me the best advice to help me do well in my dissertation. Or I'm expecting my beloved, somebody who I want to be with, to spend the rest of my life with, to trust me. But I must trust them. I must believe that whatever journey we want to go on, I have to, I have to lean into their own bubble, which is their own boundaries, which is respecting them. So without all of these other things I've mentioned, you cannot build on trust. You know, I, was, I, once, I once read um, a statement um, saying that having a healthy relationship is defined by knowing each other's um, passcodes. That's not true. Knowing your passcode does not determine having a healthy relationship. I can give you my, I give people my passwords easily. You, anybody who knows me, look, I'll just type him up. I don't care about my passwords. I don't, I believe, I don't believe in secrets anyway, but that doesn't define how healthy our relationships is. Trust is earned and is not automated. Boundaries, respect, key of acceptance, they are all earned. They're not just automatic things that happen in relationships. So stop stressing yourself about what you expect someone to do. Be a better person. You develop yourself in all of these areas. And I believe that by sowing that seed of hope, of change, you begin to reap the benefits of a healthy relationship. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you. Thank you, Lady Maria. Um, it's time for questions. I've actually learned a lot um, sitting here and, and listening, and I hope that we've all learned something, but we should, we should ask questions, anything that you want to know. Um, you can put it in the chat if you don't want to talk, but um, we would also summarize everything that they've said and we'll put it on our platforms, our social media platforms, so you can read about it, you can ask questions, and then we would answer the questions as well. So before, we have just 
like nine minutes. I think that uh, um, Lady Stella is back, so we would let her take us finish up what she was talking to us about on career and, career and education. So um, let's give it nine minutes. I hope, Isive, that's fine with you. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Okay. So. Hi, sorry about that. I think nine minutes is a lot, actually. I'll be done in like four minutes. Sorry about that, it's technology. <laughs> right, so just very quickly, I, I've had to skip a lot of slides. So one of the areas of knowing also managing stress is to identify your strengths and your weaknesses. However, having said that, I always tell people, there isn't anything like your weaknesses. Rather, I say that there are strengths, there are things that you haven't actually worked on to strengthen them. So for instance, say you're, you're indecisive. So some people struggle to make decision. By constant practicing or finding yourself in an environment or situation that forces you to think will get you thinking quick on your face. So there isn't anything like necessarily your weaknesses because when people say that weakness, a lot of people just kind of benchmark on that and don't want to get involved or don't want to bother themselves anymore because, oh, this is my weakness. This is not your weakness. It's just something you've not taken time to work on to enhance or practice more to become better. So it's very important to, to do that. And I, I made a list of few things, but because of time, I'm going to quickly run through it. So you need to find out, are you someone who's very good at self-control? Because if you don't have self-control, you're going to be sleeping all through your academic year. You're going to be slacking to do, get those CVs out there to get yourself a job. Are you ambitious? If you're not ambitious, then again, and that's those some of the factors that you have to be thinking about. If you're thinking of going into IT, then you have to think innovative. You have to be an innovative person who likes change, who's driven for change and fast paced environment. And if you want some fields that you're going to, you need attention to details. So there's some areas that you need to identify yourself in. And then um, final, one of the final areas of, as well that helps in reducing stress in career mm -hmm. and academics is your style of learning. Um, you need to know whether you're a visual person, audio, touchy person. So I put like, are you an activist? So you're a doer. You like to be in groups and talk about things, then it sinks into you. Are you more of a reflector? So you like to watch things like a video clip and observe things. So you might find yourself in more of a practical environment to see things as they play or unfold. Are you someone who's more of a thinker? So you like your theory. You like to see your stats and figures and rationals behind things. And then are you a pragmatic person? So you like to apply facts to situations so you need to find what works for you like for instance just a quick example while i was studying on my undergrad and i think when i did my law school actually i bought this pen i think it's called like a spy pen i take it to my lecture just to record things because i have to listen to things over and over again that's me i listen and then i make notes and i i love writing so and sometimes when you're someone who learned by listening and writing when you write you miss things out and then you're stressing up so if you take like a recorder into lecture maybe you need to ask for permission to do especially with covid lectures are now online so you can watch them over and over again so you need to really know what works for you and then just take it from there and then finally is mentorship you can't i tell you the truth you can't go far sometimes in life without a mentor because a mentor basically someone who's gone ahead of you someone who's done what you're trying to achieve so why don't you just pick and and learn rather than having to go do those things yourself and i also say to people you know you find people say oh be my mentor be my mentor but you need to prepare yourself to mentor others so mentor to be mentored is also a good way some of us were very good to receive when the receiving end but we don't want to give out but those are skills that you need to build and for coming from an employer point of view i worked for civil service and one of the reasons why they use um competency base or such they call it um what's the word now it's a new thing they've changed. It's no longer competency based. I think it's like success rate, something like that, to recruit. It's because they want to know you for who you are and how well you fit into a job. So it's not just that's why you see someone who got a third class can still get a good job because they might have got the third class because maybe they weren't very good with exams or they might have had a challenge during their studies 
um, so or some people might have encountered some kind of bereavement or something that affected their results. But this person is very competent. So a lot of recruiters recruit on the basis of competency. So what have you done? What experiences do you have? What is how can you handle stress? Give me an example where you manage stress. Give me an example when you've had to lead in a role. So if you're not ready to be mentored or mentor, you're limiting yourself. So when you get then thrown into the deep end, you're trying to find yourself. So it's very important. And I say to people, in, when it comes to academics, a good mentor can be your lecturer or your tutor or your personal tutor or your course leader or someone else in that field. But when it comes to work, please, please, please do not use your manager or your line manager. Reason being simple, conflict of interest. I fell a victim of that. Some people are quite, pardon me to say, quite shallow-minded or myopic in their thinking that when you ask a line manager to manage you, they're thinking you want to take over their job. And sometimes it's human nature to be defensive as well. So don't, if where possible, don't use your line manager, go out of line and ask for maybe, even someone maybe in a different department to actually mentor you or go into your mentorship schemes at work um, in workplaces they have a lot of well mentorship things that they do in universities they have i'm sure there's some sessions that they do run things like that that can help you to get on um, and, and kind of like progress yourself and because education is not just about your degree and what you learn it's about life skills that you learn as you go along and like we talked about relationships your faith how you manage situations as they come along so mentorship is a very very big one and i'm going to stop there and so I, what i did <laughs> i did as well was to put some links um, and i'm glad that your university university of love bro you've brought in this in the night light people so you need to for if if you need support with stress if you're stressed out and you need support in any area First thing first, I always, I love my family, family first. I'm so privileged to have a family that is really there for me. I know not everyone has that opportunity, but if you really do utilize your family, family, friends and community is a very good place to find solace and support. And then mind the website, obviously, which is right for mental health or they, they give you guidelines on what to do, how to distress and all of that. And there's this mindfulness as well. I, I got involved at work like five minutes. They allow us to go out like and just do this headspace exercise thing just to relax your mind and then come back to your desk. You can have it on your phone. I think there's an app for it as well. You can just breathe in, breathing exercises and all of that. So that helps as well. And your university counseling team, you can have other resources in university. So if you're someone who um, one of your challenges is during exams, you just can't cope. You might want to go to library to read rather than being at home, because then you can have that space and that academic mindset to do that. So utilize the resources you have around the university. For career wise, go for you um, go for, for affairs. <laughs> Someone much was one time said when I was really naive and ignorant. I remember going for academic fairs or career fairs. I, I like go there just to pick pens because I have an obsession with pens. So I pick all the pens and all the freebies and just never bother speaking to them. You're just proper shooting yourself on the foot. So go for those things, speak to someone, speak to them. You might even there find someone who's in house who can actually help you tell you more about the organization that you're interested in. And you can actually ask to go in there to work to find what the firm or what the organization is like and doing all this you're kind of helping yourself really and kind of setting those ladders because one challenge we tend to have especially this generation we want to jump too high and when you set that massive space and you're trying to jump from here to there it's too big a space but when you build gradually you find yourself being more realistic with your goals and then finally you you, you can use your business links local business links where they advertise jobs advertise careers and professions and things that happen in the society in the community in your local area and i encourage people to listen to podcasts a lot you will learn a lot from that as well and i know someone mentioned about nhs and gps they can refer you for therapies yoga i know some people have their reservation about yoga but <laughs> they work as well and also there's the let's talk well-being as well so those are the links like i said I, i'm like ruby said i think we might be leaving this for you guys to use and if you have any questions i'm happy to answer them either here or out of out of line or out of camera 
And that's it from me. Thank you so much for your patience and allowing me to finish. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lady Stella. <laughs> um, yep, I think you, you can stop sharing now. Yeah, I'm doing, trying to do that now. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So like, like I said, I think that we are, we are very privileged to be in a very good university where we have most of these facilities available to us for free. Um, we have the faith and spirituality center where you can go. Um, when it comes to a career, if you, like, there's a career section where you can actually go for advice and support in doing your CVs and all of that. And as um, Lady um, Stella said, um, in terms of looking for a job, it's not just about having a, a first class or a distinction, it's about being mentored and how to, what you have actually done and what you are capable of doing. And we are privileged to have opportunities to take part in action, being part of a committee, being a chair of a committee, or even if you are in the hall, being a chair of the hall, it all adds up to your CV and it gives you a good experience on, of how to relate with people, how you manage people and all of that. And having all those things on your CV actually helps you when you leave the union, even in getting um, emplacement before you finish uni. So I would, I would encourage all of us to take opportunity to take advantage of the opportunities that we have on campus even though we are in lockdown we'll soon be out of lockdown so next next academic year you can actually participate in most of these um action action activities and be part of a committee on campus and then have something to show that you can actually be you can actually take care of somebody in terms of work you can actually um do be more proactive and be a good leader as well so um, i think somebody has just asked a question um about life beacon um if you want to be mentored or coached um please i think flanny has just put it out there our platforms are available so please um like it and follow us and then you can get in contact with us the email address is there you can just send us an email but like i said everything that we have talked about today we are going to put it in the blog and send it out on our on our social media platform facebook instagram and twitter it would be there so you can actually go back and listen to it and send us emails on any questions you have and then we'll get back to you on it um thank you very much I think I would, I would leave you to a CV to continue with the event. So, are you still feeling stressed about your education, faith and relationships? Just reach out to your Life Beacon today for the support and mentoring which you deserve.